It was a historic two and a half day visit by US President Obama and his wife Michelle Obama. The high points of his trip being his Republic Day presence as the chief guest and his speech to a select audience at Siri Fort audience. All right, those are the visuals, live visuals that we're bringing to you of the Obamas leaving from New Delhi for Saudi Arabia. That wraps up officially the two and a half day visit of the Obamas to New Delhi. Well, there has been substance, there has been hype, there's been new promises made. Some call it a turning point in the US, Indo-US relations. And with that, the Air Force One there taking off bringing an end to a successful visit of the Obamas to India. Editor Strategic Affairs, Gaurav Savant and Kamaljeet also joined me on the phone line. Gaurav, first, let's come to you. I was talking about this being a whole gamut of uh, emotions as well as substance that we're talking about here with the Obamas being in India, especially after the two and a half day visit to Delhi. Just take us through how analysts have been looking at this visit by the US President that has scripted history. Gaurav, are you with me? All right, we seem to have lost the line there with Gaurav Savan. Kamaljeet Sandhu is still with us on the phone line, I believe. Kamaljeet, an official wrap-up of that two-and-a-half-day visit by the Obamas to India. Tell us how analysts, like I was asking Gaurav, are viewing this visit by the President. Well, it was a very successful two-and-a-half days by President Obama and his wife, and obviously the eve of all the Saudi Arabia now. But definitely many are saying this was as solid. One is it's also about making new belief in terms of friendship between the United States and India. Earlier, obviously, there was a tangent where the, it was seen that the United States was close to Pakistan, uh, but especially with the nuclear deal being cleared, uh, with climate change being discussed with the United States and India, uh, this is obviously about turning a new leaf, uh, not just about personal friendship between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President Barack Obama, but also between the countries and obviously trying to gain both in terms of defense, economic, as well as trading ties, uh, climate change, uh, other various issues being discussed. Uh, this is a high point and obviously uh, not just being a Republic Day Parade uh, chief guest, uh, he talked about many, many other issues, uh, which obviously says that India could be the best alliance partner in terms of friendship with the United States. So India is obviously looking forward to that. And remember, uh, there has been a bonhomie between the two, uh, two tall leaders of the country. But definitely there has been a certain path behind when Narendra Modi for quite some time did not get a visa. And obviously yes. after becoming the Prime Minister, there has been a change in equations. Uh, uh, obviously President Barack Obama walking all that way, uh, reaching up to Narendra Modi. And obviously there is a personal equation. And this is also about taking the friendship of India and United States to all together a new level. Also, uh, Narendra Modi is tweeting over uh, this two and a half day visit. We're just getting news of the Prime Minister saying, and I'm going to quote him here, and Kamaljeet, I'll come back to you after that. Well, Narendra Modi has said that uh, your visit has taken India-USA ties to new level and opened a new chapter. Wish you a safe journey. Narendra Modi also uh, going on to thank him for it. Kamaljeet, it's been two and a half days of hectic visits around New Delhi for President Obama and it's ended on a very stirring note after his speech at the Siri Fort Auditorium. It's not just about friendship, it's also about a symbolic visit by President Obama. He's almost on his next last leg of term. Uh, this is his second visit. It was seen as something which is also obviously about both United States and India reaching together. Uh, this is obviously about how United States wants to come close. India is again a very big trading nation. They would want to increase their own employment. India has obviously been looking up to United States to have a better, uh, a better deal with them. Also about the nuclear deal, which was very important, significant uh, for the Ind for, for, for Indian ties. Uh, that has gone through now and obviously there was a presentation and we've heard uh, President Obama make that speech to three, four, to all the youngsters talking about the strength of Indian democracy and how it is important to be tolerant in religion. He spoke about the factors about how he knew about India, whether it was talking about Shah Rukh Khan or Mary Kom or for that matter Milka Singh. So obviously he did understand the length and breadth and about how 
Uh, there were inspiration, uh, inspirational leaders uh, that includes Mahatma Gandhi, Martin yes. Luther King, uh, uh, Swami Vivekananda. So all these people, he did, he, uh, leaders, he did mention. So this is something which is obviously about looking forward to the future. It is about looking forward to the strengths of both the nations and how similar the oldest democracy and the largest democracy will come together for stronger ties. Kamaljeet, we also heard President Obama go on to say that I believe America can be India's best partner. But of course, this is not going down well with China that seems to be edgy over this two and a half day visit. Well, definitely all eyes of the neighbors, whether it's uh, China or whether it's Pakistan, they've been looking at uh, closer ties and obviously how symbolic this entire relationship between President Obama and Prime Minister Narendra Modi with a bear hug, uh, with the handshakes, with obviously the photo opportunities. Uh, so they are looking at it very closely and obviously many also believe in China. This is to counterbalance and obviously a shot in the arm for India. But definitely uh, they are very wary of that particular relationship and obviously uh, also a move about how Russia could come closer to Pakistan and to China. So there is a certain balance and what is important is how United States sees India as a power balance within the Southeast Asia region. Uh, President Obama also spoke about uh, the, uh, uh, the importance of the Indian Ocean and how there should be free movement, a clear signal towards China. So there would be a lot of reading into that particular aspect as well. Uh, but definitely India is very important. It's a very crucial equation. And obviously this is, there seems to be a tangent shift as I spoke to you earlier. Uh, this is not just about United States and Pakistan now. It's also about uh, India and, and United States. And how importantly uh, that in yes. terms of war against terror, India is a global partner with the United States. Do stay with me, Kamajit. I also have editor, strategic affairs, Gaurav Savan, joining me on the phone line. Gaurav, we've seen the Obamas just wrap up the two and a half day visit to India. What would you say is the biggest takeaway from it, keeping aside the personal chemistry that both the global leaders have also admitted to? Would you say the breakthrough in the nuclear impasse was the biggest takeaway? Uh, you know, while this visit had a lot of optics and symbolism, this visit was much more about than just symbolism. There were substantive takeaways. You rightly pointed out uh, the Indo-US uh, civil nuclear deal. There has been uh, forward movement on that deal and that uh, that is good. Uh, but that's only one aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, an important aspect was the CEO's meeting, uh, you know, yesterday where there was talk of the $4 billion uh, initiation of a, of, of a loan or uh, cooperation. And that this being a vast untapped sector, this is where the real cooperation will lie between the two countries. And that is something uh, which will create vested interest to ensure that this relationship uh, does not go through, uh, you know, the ups and downs that it usually does. Uh, that there have been moments that this in the India-US story has seen many highs. It's also seen lows. But now the effort is to show that the lows are done away with. And that is why, there, there, you know, there's... Cooperation on counter-terrorism is a major movement forward. Uh, that is something that hasn't been spoken about at all uh, or much in public domain. But uh, whether it's tracking funds that terrorists have access to, the Hawala route that terrorists have access to, the safe havens of terror in Pakistan, in this region, that is something where there is, there is substantive movement, uh, substantial movement forward. Uh, America seeking India's help in counter-radicalization of youth. That is a major movement forward. As far as defense is concerned, there are Pathfinder uh, defense agreements that have been agreed to. Four of them uh, in the DTTI sector uh, 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 initiative. Now, should that be successful, because these are four Pathfinder moves, uh, you could see high-end technology uh, transfer between India and the U.S. Uh, easier said than done presently, but there is forward movement, Vedika. Also, talking about the youth, Gaurav, what a note to really leave India on with that stirring speech that he gave at the City Fort Auditorium earlier today. Look, this is, this is America trying to link up to the new India. So while there is uh, mm -hmm. so much talk about uh, Swami Vivekanand, uh, there is also talk about SRK and Mary Kom. Yes. So, uh, you know, that is connecting with this generation and the story of Vishal uh, connects you to the next generation. Uh, the fact that he wants to join the army, the fact uh, that he wants to uh, push higher education, that is one area where US and India uh, hope to cooperate a lot in the times to come. Uh, a, a big uh, initiative with the Human Resources and Development Ministry uh, that could uh, uh, take place now is to see uh, professors from Harvard or Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Ivy League colleges coming to India on a sabbatical for a period between one month and six months and teaching here. 
Now, should that initiative yes. uh, kick off, it's going to be outstanding for Indian students, Indian scholars. They don't have to go to America to study uh, the best uh, education. The best minds will come to India uh, for a couple of months, if at all, and, and teach them if this initiative is successful. This is something where India is very, very keen to link up in the education sector. And this is, uh, you know, high technology uh, sector. So this is, again, a forward movement, Velika. God, to stay with me. I also have managing editor TVTN Rahul Kaval joining me on the phone line. Rahul, you were there at the Siri Fort Auditorium when that stirring speech was made. Just take us through what the people on the ground really felt after Obama delivered that speech. Rahul, can you hear me? All right, if Gaurav Samad is still with us, Gaurav, also just take us through how analysts are really assessing this two and a half day visit by Obama. How successful are they really rating it? The strategic community is ecstatic with this village. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the strategic community really sees forward movement. Uh, the the Indo-US civil nuclear deal uh, will will gradually pave the way for India uh, being in the you know the, the nuclear suppliers group uh, getting getting access to uh, the clubs uh, uh, which were which were so far denied to India whether it's the Vasanar uh, uh, you know agreement uh, or uh, or the NSG the Australia Asia, or all of this uh, you you will see forward movement in the times to come uh, it US has said that they want to see India a part of the UN Security Council as a permanent member that's forward movement uh, one thing which hasn't been talked about uh, publicly is uh, you know is is uh, is Pakistan Neither India nor the U.S. spoke openly about Pakistan, mm -hmm. but there were substantive discussions on Pakistan-sponsored terror and safe havens in Pakistan, and how do you take them out? And one one major movement forward is uh, uh, you know squeezing funds to Pakistan to terrorists in Pakistan, uh, cracking down on Hawala network. All of this also in India's interest works uh, out in favor of people like Daud Ibrahim. You know, India has been saying go after Daud Ibrahim for a long time. When you go after the Hawala network, when you go after the property market, all of this, there will we are, we are, India is hoping that there will be pressure on Pakistan yes. uh, to crack down on such elements. So that's again a forward movement. Gaurav, I'm going to come back to you in a minute. I believe a managing editor TVT and Rahul Kaval is back on the phone line with us. Rahul, away from analyzing the strategic impact really of this trip of President Obama to India, let's just talk about the Siri Fort interaction with the youth that you were there for, you were present. They just tell us from, you know, talking about the common man Vishal to talking about SRK, how deep an impact did President Obama have on the youth there? The first and foremost thing is he's speaking to a bunch of people who have in some form or the other very close association uh, with the United States. Either uh, alumni of various colleges mm -hmm. in the United States or people who are working on research projects, uh, who've got scholarships, grants, some kind of NGO funding and working on various things here in India. And they look upon India as a land of opportunity. They look upon uh, they look upon the United States as a land of opportunity and a place where they can go fulfill their dreams. They were completely hooked on to what President Obama was saying, right from the word go. The manner in which he came in, uh, started speaking Hindi, that one dialogue where he says, Senorita, bade bade kero mein, and then he says, you know the rest. This was a man who knew how to charm his audience. And that really reflects why President Obama was such a big phenomenon, at least to begin with, uh, before he got elected and then immediately in the aftermath of the U.S. He had the audience eating out of his hand. People were swooning. Uh, girls thought, okay, here's a perfect husband. Young boys thought, okay, here's an opportunity. You know, here is someone I want to be like. And he spoke very powerfully. And I think in the midst of all those messages, one very significant message sent to the Modi government about religious freedom, about inclusiveness, about staying away from divisive politics. And he said it very politely. He didn't say it in a way that would lead to an immediate controversy. He was firm. He pressed the right button. And he sent that message home. There's been a lot of storm. Uh, over the past few weeks about various things that have been said and done by people of the extended Sankh Parivar. He didn't get into that uh, controversy. He didn't want to leave a sour taste in anybody's mouth. But he did make that message and that message has gone home. But that apart, as far as just connecting with the audience is concerned, he was immensely successful. I mean, we've seen Narendra Modi is a class act when it comes to connecting with the audiences. Uh, he shows that, you know, he's made of exactly the same wood. He came out, he met with kids, he got selfies, clicks, and he's actually a very, very formal person, you know. He never wears away from his 
black suits and very formal ties. He keeps it very straight. But despite that, he was able to establish a connect. When he says that both Michelle and I come from very humble backgrounds, our fathers were not rich. We went to the right colleges. We got the right support. We got the right scholarship, and we've reached where we have. And now it's my responsibility. It's our responsibility to ensure that both uh, my daughters and people like with us uh, get similar opportunities to go up and grow and fulfill their dreams. This was a button. This was a speech where. Uh, he clearly scored very, very high marks as far as the audience was concerned. Also, Rahul, a lot of people have been talking about the chemistry between President Obama and Prime Minister Narendra Modi. What's interesting, though, Rahul, is that President Obama is at a point in life where he has to confront the legacy he leaves behind, while Narendra Modi's only just begun with his. That's true, and uh, President Obama understands that Narendra Modi is very different from uh, the previous Prime Minister. He comes with a huge amount of backing, uh, and at a couple of times he was actually. Uh, taking very uh, uh, polite hot shots at the Prime Minister when he compared Michelle's dress sense to Narendra Modi. Narendra Modi, of course, thought that was a big compliment and he was thrilled with uh, the attention his clothes was receiving. He thinks of himself as a fashionista, he thinks of himself who's really up there when it comes to fashion trends, likes to be well presented. And we asked him this question that don't you think you change your clothes too often? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what do you have to say about it? He says, Bhagwan me mujhe achi dress sense di hai. And you know, I like to be women proper, and especially when I'm representing the country, uh, I, need, I, I need to ensure that I'm really well attired. My colleague Supriya from Asta asked him, "Aap hi andar jaate ho flight mein dusre kapde pehente ho, dusre aur dusre kapde pehente ho." He says, "Baar ghante ki flight ke kapde to badal nahi." So he's very, very uh, unabashed about you know wanting to be up there. And we spoke yesterday on the show about those pinstripe monogram uh, suit that he wore yes. and uh, we saw Gaurav Gupta, leading fashion designer, say that whenever it's a Hermes or it's a Hugo, Louis Vuitton, they're offering this to their highest end customers. Uh, this year it's the latest fashion trend apparently and there are a lot of us who are thinking, well, Mr. is trying a little too hard, which is what Reena Dhaka said, that if you're Prime Minister, you don't need to try that hard, you need to be very classy, keep it straight. But here's a man who's keen on making an impression. See, when he says, when he refers to Barack Obama by his first name, He's also sending a message to his domestic constituents, saying, uh, saying that, see how quickly I've been able to form a relationship with the most powerful leader in the world. That's me. And I'm working, I'm working really hard, I'm working for you, and I'm able to strike these wonderful relationships, I'm able to get things done. There's someone who's over-eager. Like it or not, that's the way he is. It works to his advantage, sometimes it could work to his disadvantage, but that's who Brand Modi is, and that's the brand he's pushing. Yes. And President Obama, from the sense that I got by speaking to some of the American representatives who were at City Port while we were waiting for the American president to come, appreciates the fact that here's someone who can get things done. With the previous government, they were struggling. You know, the government would say the right things, but then not show the ability to get things done. If you see on the nuclear liability clause, what the BJP government has gone out and done is essentially the opposite of what they were arguing in the opposition. You've got various leaders who've made all kinds of comments on nuclear liability. All of this they were vetoing. But he understands what needs to be done to ensure that Barack Obama goes back home with something to show to his constituents, to show to his critics, and to say, here's what I got out of it. Investing out, uh, whether it's he will be able to invest in India. And, um, and Narendra Modi very quickly, very pragmatically, overturned the original opposition from his party. And now, apart from Prakash Karat, we don't have anybody else objecting to what they've gone out and done. They've gone out and done it because the business done. All right, Raul, do stay with me. I also have Gaurav still on the phone line with me. Gaurav, you also have China praising Pakistan as an irreplaceable friend. How worried should India be after this visit by President Obama to India that has been very keenly tracked both by China as well as Pakistan? Rahul, if you're still with us, let me put that question to you. Well, you know, one of the key things that India has done with the comments that have been made about South China Sea, with mm -hmm. the comments that have been made about the Asian pivot for a very long time, uh, the United States has been trying to implement its own variant of the pearl of strength strategy to contain China by forging very close relationships with Japan, Korea, Vietnam, uh, Australia, in the South China Sea, in the Indo-Pacific region, trying to form a ring, trying to ring fence China. And so far, India has been very, very non-aligned. When history and when, you know, academics judge this visit, they will come to the conclusion that this is the first time that India has firmly, after the end of the Cold War, thrown its lot with any one uh, country or the other. We, we won't say it, we will never admit it.
China is still very close. But we've realized that with the United States, there's probably less to fear, uh, there's probably lesser disagreement than there is uh, with China or with Pakistan or with Russia at this point in time. And therefore, we're seeing a very important uh, strategic realignment here where India and the United States are coming closer. Of course, the doors for business, the doors for partnership will remain open uh, with China. And that's something that the United States also did over the past two decades. But we're essentially seeing the first step. This is something that, you know, uh, this is in some senses the end of the Nehruvian mold of trying to stay away from the United States, the antipathy towards the U.S. That's kind of gone now. Here's a prime minister who wants to be friends with the United States. Obama went to the extent of saying, uh, the U.S. can be India's best friend at the, uh, at yes. the City Port Auditorium. And that's very significant because here's a country that you wanted to be away from as much as possible for much of our years as a free country. Now we're seeing a very warm embrace and that embrace will tighten as the years go by. And that, I think, is a very, very significant achievement. And that's what China is really unhappy about. In fact, you'll see China and Pakistan come closer together. We're already seeing that. There's mm-hmm. reference to Iron Brothers. The Pakistani spokespersons have been saying all weather friends. There's yes. China supplying Pakistan nuclear reactors. So they're pushing on that direction. It seems China and Pakistan getting closer as India and the United States uh, embrace each Absolutely. other even more tightly. All right, Rahul Kavak there. Thank you so much for joining us with those details. Well, that is a wrap on President Obama and the First Lady's visit to India. And they've wrapped it up with a namaste. On that note, we slip into a short break. News and updates in minutes from now. Stay tuned to Headline.